Example one was a problem where we were investing in a quarterly compounding uh, account. So, but I wanted to remind you that the amount that is in a, at any point of a compounded interest account um, is the amount is equal to P and that multiplied by one plus uh, the rate over N, which is the number of compoundings that happen in a particular year, and that raised to N times T. Now, the, the things are is that A is the amount um, after T years, P, principal, that's the initial investment, R is the rate, and I'm going to emphasize that it's uh, in decimal, that N is the number of compoundings in a year, and T is a uh, number of years. That's our formula that we're going to be using. Now, in example one, Jose opens a savings account with principal P dollars that pays 5% interest, compounded quarterly. What will his ending balance be after one year? Well, we have some information, but we're only told that we have P dollars um, as an initial investment. So what we're going to do is talk about this on a quarterly basis. So what if we're talking about just Q1? In Q1, this is what's actually happening. The amount that will be in the account after Q1 is the initial investment P plus P times the rate, which is 5%. Now that's going to be expressed as a decimal. So when I divide 5 by 100, I get 0 0.05, but I put underneath 4, which is one-fourth of the interest that you accrue in a year. And the reason why is because we're posting this at uh, a quarterly uh, position. Now, if we factor out that P, we end up with something that really looks like this. 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 4. And that's what happens in the first quarter. Well, in the second quarter, so Q2, we actually have that exact event happening, but that's the amount that's carried from Q1. We have to actually multiply that by this amount again, because that's to calculate the interest earned in Q2. So as we go to Q3 now, we have the same thing happen. In Q3, we actually take the money that we earned in Q2, which is this amount right here, and I'm going to shrink this, and I have to multiply that by another one of this expression right here. Now, for Q3, this is the amount that we have. So if to finish off the year, Q4, the fourth quarter, we're going to take this amount again, and we're going to multiply that by another calculation of interest. And so there that is. And so the better way to really write that is in our compound interest formula, that this is A. Um, is equal to P times 1 plus 0 0.05 over 4, and that raised to the 4 times 1 power, because it's just in one year, but this is what happens, and so we did it 4 times, and so that's how that goes. Now, to really understand that, if we apply that to something that really shows us some money now, here we have uh, checking for understanding that Rico deposits $800. So his principal investment is $800. His interest is 3.87% per year, but that becomes a rate then of 3.87 divided by 100. We'll express that as 0 0.038. Seven. And um, and we're talking about quarterly, so N is going to equal 4. So now we just plug this in. The amount that we're earning then is $800, and that times 1 plus 0 0.0387 divided by 4, and that raised to the fourth power. And we're talking about one year, so we're times one. Now we get to do this rounding to the nearest cent. So let's go ahead and plug this into a calculator. So in the calculator, we're going to just go ahead and clear this, but we're going to um, start off with just doing the inside of the parentheses first. So we're going to kind of do an order of operations deal here. So it's one plus 0 0.0387 
and that divided by 4. Go ahead and hit enter and I'm going to take that amount there and I'm going to raise it to 4 because 4 times 1 is 4. This is this amount as a multiplier of our principal. So we're going to say uh, times $800. So now we're multiplying by our principal. So that times $800 and we say enter and we now have that RICO after one full year invested in this account has an amount of $831.41. And that is example one and the check for understanding done correctly.